Hi guys, it's Kevin, and welcome back to another video. Today, guys, we'll be working on the insect study. So, we have some friends that own some bees, and they asked us if we could come over, and so we did. And they're just going to show us the process of the, the beehives and all that. So, we're going to learn it. It's going to be so fun. So, let's get started. Hive tool. It's used for prying things up because the bees make a lot of something called propolis. Propolis is made out of sap, bee sap, and pollen, and it's sticky. So, are you afraid yet? Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm going to pry this up. It's going to be a little sticky because of the propolis. Right, now here's some first-sided bees. See a couple bees on the frame here. Not too many. You can see all the propolis here. Right now. Over here and feel the propolis. Do you want to show it? Yeah, I got you. That's weird. Yeah. It's kind of weird. And, uh, put that back over <laughs> here. <laughs> now we'll see some bees in here. Again, I'm moving very, very slowly. And you don't want to drop anything. Drop them up high up. This hive over here is very, very aggressive in me, okay? Open that thing up and I'll come after you. This one, because it's weaker, is less likely to do that. Okay, so, over here, this is what's called a honey super. This is capped honey here. Here you can see they're drawing out the comb. They're adding wax to it. The wax comes out of their heads after they've eaten, eaten the sugar water, the, the nectar, and the honey. Okay, again, you have to be careful not to squish a bee. And see, that's honey there too. There's a lot of bees there. How many frames in this? Seven, and you're right. These are eight frame boxes. Okay. We count seven. Hmm. See the little divides in here? This is called a honey super. And we put the frames a little bit further apart than we do in the lower part because we want them to draw the comb out further. Make it thicker. Now you know if I say run, I'm going to turn around and go that way and go inside the back porch and close the door. You're okay. going to run, you're going to walk smoothly. Yeah. Hands, just you see that bee just bumped my finger? It was an accident. And it didn't wasn't didn't mean anything. Okay. Now here is what they're really working on. Okay. So are these the bee workers? workers? What do you think they're doing with it? What do you see in there? They're making something? Or... That is honey in there that is not yet ripe. And over here we have the same thing. But we have, we have some capped honey in here. See the capping is on? Yeah. What they do is they will cap it when it reaches a certain um, moisture. moisture level. Okay, this this honey is still too moist, and so they're working on drying that out. And the temperature inside the hive is is warm enough that they can do this. Now, I couldn't lift that out without uh, face mask and everything if I was working with this here. 
because they are a meaner breed of bees. Basically, uh, blame the queen and the people they made it with. Over here, we've got a. They're perpetually much, pissed. Much bigger one. Okay. So if that queen mates with a more docile breed of drone, next time through, we may get more calm, happy, dude. It's all hard. it's everything's cool okay. bees. A queen will oh. mate, mate with 15 to 20 drones when she first flies, and she'll never mate again after that. So her lifespan with sperm is about uh, three years. Okay, describe what you see. Looks like really yellow and looks like it's going warm. Like I'm working this, this on it is, for a little bit. Yeah, this is all new. Why was the other one darker? Well, uh, because it was uh, moist and they were drawing it out. It's older comb. When the bees walk on something, they don't <laughs> clean their feet. And so they get pollen on it and it gets darker comb. This is new comb. This is comb that was made this year. And you see the bees all moving over the things. Okay. See if you can hold that and turn it and look at it. Okay. So what's a drone bee? Uh, basically the men the bees. Oh, the men. They only last a couple, like uh, 90 days was it? Mm -hmm. yeah. They they uh, mate and then they die with the yeah. comb bee. So, you can see that. Now, I'm going to take this from you and... Oh, there, see, I goofed. Those worker bees I goofed. Bees I goofed. Okay. I, what happened? I bumped into that and that threw all the bees up. Okay. And what do we have here? Let me inspect that for me. Do not drop that. It's starker, so it's been... Now hold on to it tighter with your fingers. But the cats are light, so Okay. Now look at the other side. It's over here. Mm -hmm. So I guess they've been... Yeah. Okay. Come on over here and hang it. You know, mm -hmm. the thing hanger here. Yeah. practice, take the hive tool and remove this frame here. So I'm doing that. Okay, so how do we do it again? I'm going to put this like this and put it underneath. I'm going to lift this side and then I'm going to lift the other end because they're blue. Okay, there you go. It. It's free. I'm going to do the other side. This right here. Hold down and lift the thing up. Okay. Now, if you drop that on the ground, what are you going to do? Uh, walk away slowly. <laughs> okay. Alright. Can you check the other side? No. So, they are starting to draw that out. Now, normally, they'll work towards the center part because this is, like I say, a honey super. So let's go ahead and put that back in. Okay. Now I'm going to put the other two back in. Okay. Squish the bees too much. Inside here and see if we can find some brood. Okay. I'm going to uh, uh, watch out for for Queen. She may be in this level. Usually she's down in the bottom. We, yeah, we may not find the Queen right now. But yeah, but we need to watch. We will see that she is actually here. Uh, 
Can you see into that more than coming? There is some brood in there. Mm -hmm. This has just been cleaned out, so new new brood uh, okay. is starting to be laid again. This is honey. Yes. These are baby bees that haven't hatched yet. And there's one that's in the process of hatching right there. Here. These, this one and right this one. There. And that one, see where it's open right there, that little tear? There, uh, and there's a nurse bee looking at it. These are nurse bees who are who clean out the cells and feed the new um, larvae. There's one right there that's, there's a little hole and there are two others that are in the process of coming see out. right there? Can you, can you, you see it there? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here. Oh, you'll see a lot of brood on this side too. Look at this. Look, see the little worms, the little white worms down in there? Yeah. Larvae. Really larvae. So the queen is probably on this level. She could be. We've got two levels she can work on. Okay. Bees hatch out and then new eggs are laid. So All right. one area you'll have something like this. Look at that pattern. Okay. Can you show me where the brood is and where the honey is? Um, the honey? Is this the honey? Nope. Look at where it's shiny. Oh, this is honey there. over here. This is all brood here. And you can see some little worms, the little white worms down in there. That That's the larva. And over here where you see the orangey color, that is pollen. Oh. Okay. And there will be different colors of pollen depending on which flowers the bees have uh, been walking on. Now, we have a real pretty good pattern here of brood. <coughs> some have already hatched out. And some holes are obviously left in there. They don't lay brood in every single cell. They, they leave what we call heating cells in there. So that uh, on every 20 or 30 cells, there'll be an empty one where a bee can crawl into and then move its wings, move its wing muscles to generate heat, to heat and warm the place. Okay, now here we do this just by turning it sideways a little bit and lift it out. So this is, that's, that's uh, the belly, that's, that's the food tray. So they, they put the honey and the pollen close by because they're lazy. They don't want to travel too far. And See, they're efficient. They, they feed the baby bees their first eggs, they feed them something called royal honey, which is royal jelly, which they make. Now, this is a little heavy, so I'm going to have to support that with my finger here. Okay, see how it's mostly honey. This is kind of a wild comb we're building here, which we don't really try to encourage. But that, that is all storage there. And on this side, How many times do you get stung? That was about 15 times. That was not from oh. one of the stung like that. So normally when we were working all the hives, I might get stung once or twice. But uh, part of it is, okay, I just broke the box and turned it a little bit to break the propolis. A lot of it is that, uh, one, you need to build up a little bit of immunity to the bees bee venom. So some beekeepers will start out in the early spring and the bee lands on their leg and they'll crush it so it'll sting them. So that they, they don't do that. Now Martha always thought that she was highly allergic to bee stings, but... I was. She isn't these days. Okay, did you 20. show me? Go ahead. Here's this up. chips and things like that in there, okay. They use this machine called the smoker. So at the bottom, they push it just a little bit, so the bees think it's a fire, so they go to the lowest level. We did and smoke them a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get a little sweaty here. Uh, 
Margaret? Yes. A little lift, so you can smoke underneath. Okay. Okay, it takes a little time. Hi, right Derek. Got to smoke. there's a fire and they go down further down into the hive. Well, some of them will go go ahead and smoke that part. No. Just, just pump over the top of it. Point at the thing. It's used to calm the bees. They say it causes them to go reward themselves with honey so they get less aggressive. And this is pollen. Uh, this is brutes. And then uh, air birds. And then this is honey. This is honey too. There's the pollen, there's the brood. Okay. Now what are these large bumps here? Uh, uh, babies hatching. Those are drone cells. Um, Those are drone cells. Okay. Can you see the drone cells? Drones are bigger than regular honeybees. Okay. The queen does not like sunlight. She will be running away from us. And it's all pollen. Mm -hmm. this, this might be eggs. They're eggs in the month of PC. Go into the uh, center part right in there, and you'll see some little eggs sticking out in there. Okay. The wax forms on, on their backs. There's, there's, uh, they, they extrude it out of their bodies, but the other goes through the digestive system and comes back out as, as the honey. And they regurgitate it, basically. Mm -hmm. Bee vomit. Bee vomit. The best. <laughs> okay, I've just got a sting. Alright. Okay, now what we're going to do here do you see it, Martha? It's down yes, here. Yes, yes, I see it. Okay, we're going to scrape the stinger out. What happened is one of the bees climbed up my leg and then got crushed by me moving. And so, okay. The worker bees are going out there getting honey, uh, getting nectar. You need the nurse bees, which are less than a month old, who, <coughs> who uh, take care of the, the eggs and the, the, the larvae and bees, all this other stuff. Bees. So you need other bees, at least uh, maybe uh, a couple of thousand. And she, once she's mated and starts laying eggs, then she uh, keeps the numbers up. And they get information from other bees. The, the, the field bees come back yeah, in. Right they in give uh, information on, on where there's here. where there's food, and the the queen pretty much knows what they're going to need. We're going to need some more workers. We're going to need uh, some drones. We're going to need this, that, whatever, and it just cool. changes. And she makes a little, she pipes this little little sounds, and she calls her baby, this one, all of her babies, to do different things, honey. including protect the queen. Now, if that was full time. Okay, now we put the lid on it. Put that on it. Just pick it up there. That will be the one I can see. And I need to send it from the inside. I'll be alright. I'm just a little bit. telescoping, so it'll go down over the top. It's not only just so the wind doesn't blow away, which is very unlikely, it's also to state the health of the hive. So we put the brick in the front to say this is a healthy hive. We put it this way to say it may be healthy with these inspection. We put it here 
to say it's in trouble, but put it this way to say it's dead. Okay. Okay? So, it's just something to remember because... Is that number three or number four? I forget. <laughs> so it's just the code that most of the beekeepers will use. Most of these hives here were checked uh, about a week ago. The honey extracted, so we're good there. We started here about seven or eight years ago. The thing was that 29 years ago, this very month, I went outside where I lived in Oregon and I stepped on a bee. And I came inside and go ahead and start opening that. Just open this, no, no, no. just There's lift this, bit. lift this a little and hold that down from it just a bit. There you go. Now open it up a little bit more. And it hurt, and I went inside, and by the time I got to my kitchen, I had blurred vision, and my speech was, I was all kind of slurring my words, and now I'll start closing it, and watch until it gets just up to the bottom of those rings, and almost, a little more, a little more, and close it. And I'm going to hold it, hold it right there underneath the skin, and bring it. So it's in the middle, just sit like this nice and tight. There we go. Now you can scrape it across the bottom there. The, scrape the top of the thing just right across. So like that. And now you can put the lid back on. There you go. You can take that home. Okay. Well, not only was my vision blurry and my speech slurry, I sank down to the floor. And a friend of mine was visiting me at the time, and I pointed up to the shelf to some allergy stuff that I used for some other allergy. I forget what it was, just, you know, antihistamine thing. I said, give me that, please. And I took that and a big glass of water, and in about five minutes I was sitting up and seeing clearly and speaking clearly. But I'd always heard that bee, bee venom allergy bee sting allergy was cumulative. Each time it happened, it would get worse. So I avoided bees for the next 20 or 21 years. And then outside about, it's been about 10 years ago, I went outside and I stepped on a bee. I like walking barefoot, but I didn't see the bee. And I washed it off, I got the stinger out and all that. And I waited to start feeling woozy, and I didn't. There was nothing but pain in my foot. And my husband, who had kept bees back when he lived in Albion, Michigan, back in the late 80s, early 90s, and loved to keep bees, and I kept telling him, well, if you want to bury your wife, um, go ahead. But then I got that sting and nothing happened. I said, okay, go for it. And I've gotten at least 50 stings since then, and I haven't had any deleterious or adverse effects. So things can change. The body chemistry actually changes every seven years. Your whole, every cell in your body is, is uh, replaced over a seven year period. So it would have been about three, three cycles for me. So something changed. I'm very grateful <laughs> because bees. So we got some bees one time. And they were in the back of the car, so Martha goes and gets there's a water. Some of them got out. Yeah, and, got and and the, the bee came over and with its tongue licked the water off of her finger, so she saw a bee tongue for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they were in the they were in the back of the car. Some of them had gotten out of what they call it a nuke. It's a small hive box, mm -hmm. and. They were in the in the back part, and they were going to toast out there. They were going to die, and I wanted them to come in. So I got, got a little saucer, put a little water in there, so they have something to drink. And they started coming over and looking at it, and I held, dip my finger in, and held it up. And this bee came over there, and click, click, click. So for the first time ever, I not only could see a bee tongue, but it was licking water off of me. And I said, that's so cool. <laughs> But I rescued about two-thirds of the bees that were out there, the rest of them. I just opened up the windows and wherever they went, they went. But uh, I'd, I'd gather up a few and I carried them out and put them in front of their hive. And they went back and got some more. It's really cool. So that's one of the bee stories. 
So be cool. You can end it, Eric. Be good. Alright guys, this is the end of this video. If you guys did enjoy, please like, please subscribe, and also please share. And guys, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!